Namaste. In this video, we will study about the human female reproductive system. Let's see the parts of this okay, uh, reproductive system in uh, human females. It consists of ovaries, which will be okay, one pair, that is uh, two in number. Then it consists of accessory ducts these accessory ducts will include fallopian tubes also called ov ducts and these will be also one pair okay then includes uh, the uterus and then vagina so all these three together we call them accessory ducts then the third one include the accessory glands the accessory glands include okay mammary glands which will be one pair and then called bartholins glands will be also one pair then the last one includes is external genitalia so this external genitalia we also call all those parts together as vulva okay so this includes mons pubis so that's a uh, okay it includes mons pubis is one part the next one is uh, labia majora then labia minora okay and then okay clitoris and then right hymen so these are all the parts of uh, female reproductive system in humans so in this case uh, the labia minora is also one pair and this is also one pair so here i mentioned wherever they are present in two numbers i mentioned okay they uh, right in one pair and other than that they are all present in single now the okay ovaries the ov ducts okay and uh, uh, that is the fallopian tubes and along with that we have is uterus okay and uh, we have is uh, cervix so cervix is also the part of uh, uterus which uh, later we will okay uh, study that and then includes is uh, external genitalia okay so now all these uh, parts in fact are located in pelvic region so all these parts located in pelvic region okay now these structures right along with the, the mammary glands so all these structures along with the mammary glands of course all these together okay they function they function right uh, i mean these are in fact integrated structurally and functionally that the ovaries ob ducts uterus cervix external okay genitalia whatever that structures which we have okay discussed here along with the mammary glands they are all integrated okay so all these structures are integrated right structurally as well as uh, functionally right to support 
okay so all this going to support okay right the processes support the processes okay like uh, ovulation so ovulation is uh, okay release of uh, egg so it supports uh, ovulation then it supports okay fertilization the union of gametes then it supports pregnancy and child birth and child care so all these okay processes are supported okay by all these structures so that uh, that is why i said uh, it has integrated okay structurally and uh, functionally right now we'll see uh, these structures the first one we'll see about ovaries the ovaries are primary female sex organs they are the okay primary female uh, sex organs and uh, uh, right these ovaries are developed from mesoderm during the embryonic conditions so hence i say that okay ovaries are mesodermal in origin so that is during the developmental stages the mesoderm gives rise to ovaries now the each ovary is having uh, so it has okay a length of like 2 to 4 centimeters so it is of 2 to 4 uh, okay centimeters and uh, okay in length and uh, these ovaries as i said they are located in the okay pelvic region okay so which will be the lower abdominal region so that is located in the lower abdominal region okay <coughs> this ovary is right placed uh, at a particular position in the pelvic region with the help of uh, ligaments so here we will see some structures okay so these are all the finger like projections of the fallopian tube we will see that structure in detail So this is so this portion is uterus okay and this is the ovary right okay and uh, this ovary is uh, placed at a particular position in the okay pelvic region with the help of uh, ligaments so you'll see those ligaments okay so one of these ligament attaches this ovary okay to the uterus you may find one more okay here and one more you will see okay So this is called the broad ligament, okay, and this one is called, okay, right, the suspensory ligament, okay, and uh, this one is called 
covariant ligament okay so with the help of these uh, ligaments okay the ovary is placed in right position okay right now when we see the internal structure of the ovary the ovary is covered by okay a right uh, it has a, a thin epithelium okay so ovary each ovary is covered by okay thin epithelium so this thin epithelium is the covered okay and uh, inside uh, the ovary we have is ovarian stroma okay right so this ovarian stroma has two more distinguishable regions uh, one we call cortex so this will be located peripheral okay and another one called medulla this will be the inner most portion so if you cut okay the ovary in a longitudinal section okay we'll see so ls of ovary in the ls you may find an outer okay portion so this is the thin epithelium okay and inside this is the ovarian stroma and this ovarian stroma is again shows two distinct regions okay this outermost portion is what we call the cortex and this innermost portion i call it a medulla okay so now what is present in the case of okay uh, cortex so this cortex is a region right that contains ova at various stages of development so it consists of okay ova at various stages of development so you may see okay so the structures right so becoming something like this right so these are all okay so okay so you can see here right so i'm just mentioning later we'll see during the okay uh, process of uh, uh, oogenesis we'll come to know all these uh, different stages okay so this is uh, the x okay at various stages of development so like these are called the primordial okay uh, follicles right so you may see here okay the one called right the secondary right follicle and so and so and uh, this is the one that has uh, released the egg here okay so i can call it uh, a graphian follicle we'll see all those different stages so here i'm not mentioning uh, all these uh, different stages of oogenesis just we are uh, getting aware of what is present in case of cortex so as i said the cortex consists of ova at various stages of development okay so here these are all okay at various stages of development now what is uh, present in case of uh, uh, medulla so this medulla consists of okay it contains okay blood vessels it consists of blood vessels okay 
then lymphatic it consists of okay blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and uh, okay nerves so these are all the parts which you may find here okay so you may see right okay so this is uh, the location okay so different okay black vessels arteries veins okay all they pass here okay so in, into this uh, medulla uh, region so this is how you will be okay seeing the structure of over right so this is the one that consists of okay like uh, arteries okay uh, veins then right lymphatic uh, vessels etc so whatever i have mentioned here they are all present in the medulla region whereas the cortex region consists of okay the ova at various stages of uh, development okay we'll see uh, the development of the ova the, the process we call uh, the oogenesis uh, in detail okay in a, another concept called oogenesis okay so this is how okay the ov the ovary right uh, is made up of so it has an outer thin epithelium and has a ovarian stroma and that is having two more parts okay uh, cortex and medulla and we have seen okay an ls of the ovary here okay so now let us see the the female reproductive system diagram okay and uh, we'll see the further explanation on it okay so now let's see the ls of the female reproductive system right so here these are one pair of ovaries and we already know this uh, okay all these parts are located in the pelvis region right uh, which is a, a lower abdominal region okay uh, the part of lower abdominal region so you'll find here right one pair of ovaries here right and uh, you may find the finger like structures very close to the ovary and uh, we call them fimbriae right so this part is called infundibula okay so right from okay this uh, part infundibulum to the isthmus all together it is called fallopian tube also called oviduct and uh, this will be around 10 to 12 centimeters in length so it will be 10 to 12 centimeters in length okay right uh, the infundibulum ends with this okay finger like projections so these finger like projections are called fimbriae okay so if you uh, see here the after ovulation okay so after ovulation the movement of the fimbriae okay will take up this egg which is released from the ovary okay and the egg now enters into infundibulum and from infundibulum it okay moves to the ampullary region and from ampulla okay and uh, it may okay pass on in fact here uh, it will be in this ampullary uh, okay uh, ampullary isthmic region the fertilization uh, will actually take place okay we'll see first uh, about this right infundibula so this uh, infundibulum is funnel shaped okay so it is uh, funnel shaped right and uh, lies uh, very close to the ovary right now 
the edges of this infundibulum okay edges of infundibulum right has that finger like projections right and i call that edges of infundibulum right as fimbriae okay then these fimbriae are the one that actually help in collecting okay ovum after ovulation okay then the second part of the fallopian tube is ampulla this ampulla is the middle part of the fallopian tube and uh, this portion will be wider when we compare with the infundibulum and uh, isthmus okay uh, that's what it will be connecting infundibulum with the isthmus this is also the longest part right among the three so uh, when you compare infundibulum and isthmus okay so this portion ampulla portion will be okay longer right and uh, i have to keep in mind that right it is in the ampullary isthmic junction so at this okay point fertilization occurs okay the next one the isthmus which uh, okay connects the ampulla with the okay a uterus so this is the narrow lumen portion of uh, right ovida and this one joins ampulla with the uterus okay so that is uh, about the ovida now okay right so all these parts uh, are the one that come under this uh, fallopian tube or ovita okay we understood that once the uh, okay egg is released from the ovary the fimbria will help it to collect and then pass it to infundibulum and through ampulla and isthmus and usually this is a location uh, the ampullary isthmic junction is a location where fertilization takes place okay so after that uh, the further stages slowly move down into the uterine cavity and then the implantation takes place all those implantation and everything will come across in the coming classes okay now right so here there is a small bulging portion okay of the uterus we call it a uterine fundus and you can see here all this is a space inside the uterus and we call it a uterine cavity okay of course it is in this uterine cavity uh, the development of the embryo takes place right now when we see the wall of the uterus okay it has three layers one the outermost one the outer layer this is the outer layer okay and the endometrium will be the inner layer okay and obviously the myometrium will be the middle layer now the wall of the uterus all these three layers okay this will be the middle layer all together form the wall of uterus so perimetrium myometrium and the endometrium okay so now uh, let's see uh, the three parts here so how actually right what actually the perimetrium is uh, the myometrium and the endometrium right so let's see the perimetrium okay so this perimetrium is actually a peritoneal okay 
layer. It's a peritoneal layer, a thin layer, okay, that covers the, okay, uterus. The next one is myometrium. This myometrium is composed of, okay, muscles. It's a, okay, muscle layer. So it consists of uh, longitudinal muscles, transverse muscles, okay, right, oblique muscles and so uh, so this uh, will be the thickest part when you compare with the uh, perimetrium and uh, endometrium here. The next one, okay, endometrium. So this endometrium portion, okay, is a, uh, a mucus lining, okay. Uh, this one is a mucus lining and it has large number of okay mucus secreting glands and it is this endometrium okay so its uh, thickness varies okay uh, depending on right the menstrual okay or depending on the stage of the menstrual cycle right depends on the stage of menstrual cycle. So in the coming classes, we will study uh, in detail about this uh, menstrual cycle. So at that time, we will again come across with the, the endometrium and we will see how the thickness of the endometrium varies. Okay, now, right, so this uh, uh, right endometrium right also is the one which get replaced okay during every menstrual cycle so it gets replaced okay uh, during every uh, menstrual cycle now we'll see uh, right this portion uh, a little bit okay enlarged and we'll see that what actually it is uh, composed of. Okay, so here this is the peritoneal layer. Okay, this is the peritoneal layer, and uh, and we know that below that okay peritoneal layer so this is the outermost uh, layer below that we have is the myometrium okay so we have here this is from here to here is myometrium and this is the perimetrium okay and then right so from this portion you may find the okay actual endometrium so you see here so how okay right so this all portion it's uh, from here to here it is right endo metrium okay right now this portion the endometrium actually has uh, okay two more layers one is called right stratum basal okay uh, I'll mention it like the stratum basalis, okay, and another one called uh, stratum functionalis, okay. So this base portion, so this is the stratum basalis, the basalis, okay, is never sloughed off, means it is never removed. Whereas it is the stratum functionalis, 
okay which will be right formed completely new in every menstrual cycle okay is replaced okay during menstrual cycle so this one is the stratum basalis okay and this the remaining portion all is the stratum functionalis right so here okay from the right uh, myometrium we will see okay the blood vessels so we can see here these are all okay the blood vessels supplying into the endometrium so this endometrium is in fact a, it will be highly vascularized right so this is an artery supplying okay blood and then we will also have okay so the veins which will help in collecting the blood okay from these structures so this is a uh, i will see Okay, so right. So this is a, a tree, and uh, this one is a vein. So blood vessel supply. So all this portion, okay, uh, right, is supplied with the blood. Now the this stratum functionalis okay right from here to here its thickness will vary okay uh, depending on the uh, right menstrual stage of that menstrual cycle which we'll study it later so here i'm just magnifying okay uh, right actually this entire portion so i'm magnifying this entire portion and uh, showing it here okay so this is uh, the wall of the endometrium uh, how actually it looks like okay now coming to the uterus so as we know this is the of course uh, the uterine cavity here the uterine cavity is in connection with the vagina through a narrow canal uh, we call it the uh, okay cervical canal right so this portion is the cervix portion uh, which i call it uh, the neck of uh, uterus and the cervix okay uh, is present right at the bottom of this uh, uterus right and uh, the uterine cavity as i told it is connected to vagina through this uh, cervical canal so it is here in the vagina the sperms uh, will be released and the sperms have to swim all through this uh, cervical canal and enter the uterine cavity and move into the fallopian tube and then fertilize okay the egg which will be waiting in the okay ampullary isthmic junction right Now we will say about uh, external genitalia. The external genitalia includes uh, mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris and uh, hymen. Okay. Uh, this mons uh, pubis is a okay cushion of uh, fatty tissue. So it consists of uh, okay fatty tissue which are covered by 
skin and uh, pubic hair okay so you can see this is okay the mons pubis and uh, these are all the pubic hair right and uh, we find here okay two labia right majora uh, uh, which we consider pair of uh, okay paired folds of tissue so this is a okay paired folds of tissue so there will be two okay so this one and uh, okay so this one together is a labia majora okay and uh, here you will see a structure called clitoris okay so this will be a homologous organ okay is a homologous organ to penis in right males now there will be right another two okay flaps of skin which i call right labia minora so you can see this one and this one called labia minora okay of course uh, singular the labia majora is labium majus and the labia minora singular is labium minus right and uh, okay so this portion uh, this one okay this opening is anus okay and here this opening is called the vaginal okay orifice uh, which mean uh, opening of the vagina okay and uh, this uh, vaginal orifice is partially covered by a membrane is partially covered by a membrane okay and that is called okay hymen right so you will find okay hymen here now this is the opening of urethra so it's a urethral opening unlike uh, in case of male reproductive system the urine passage and uh, uh, sperm passage will be taking place through urethra only but in case of uh, female reproductive system right the urine passage will be having a separate opening okay and uh, the gamete passage okay of course uh, the egg will not be in fact released here whatever the egg released will be present in the uh, fallopian tube okay so uh, the vaginal orifice is a location where there will be deposition of sperms during copulation and the sperms will move through okay the cervical canal uh, the uterine cavity and finally enter into the fallopian tube and reach the egg and finally fertilize it uh, which uh, we will see uh, in detail in the coming sections okay so this is all about okay external uh, uh, genitalia here now point here uh, in many cases okay the presence of hymen uh, okay they decide it uh, as the virginity which means if uh, if hymen is present okay uh, they consider uh, so and so person is a virgin and if hymen is okay absent uh, the person is not virgin okay so so this clitoris is a finger like structure okay which i already said uh, is a structure that is homologous to okay 
a penis of males. Right now, okay. So this uh, vaginal orifice is actually covered by a membrane, okay, and that we call it a uh, hymen. Okay, uh, there is a misbelief in many people, okay, uh, saying that if hymen is present, the person is virgin, and if hymen is absent, the person is not virgin. But actually, okay, the virginity cannot be decided based on, okay, presence or absence of hymen. This is because, okay, uh, actually, uh, this hymen is okay broken off during the uh, sexual intercourse so it normally okay is torn off or is torn during coitus okay it is torn during coitus but Okay, in some persons, okay, in some persons, the hymen is broken, okay, due to okay sports the sports like uh, horseback riding okay cycling etc so such games can okay tear off this hymen so here the hymen is tear off because of uh, uh, such okay sports not because of the sexual intercourse so here the hymen is okay broken not due to sexual intercourse as i told already the hymen is usually okay torn during okay torn is usually torn during okay coitus but in this case hymen is broken due to sports okay and uh, not by okay coitus and again in some cases in some cases okay the hymen still persists even after okay sexual intercourse so we understand that even after sexual intercourse in some cases the hymen is still present okay and in some cases okay even though they do not have any sexual intercourse it can be broken so basing on this okay we cannot say that virginity uh, a, a person is a virgin or okay not a virgin based on presence or absence of hymen.